Hello, it's Maggie, the Cheshire Crafter here. I'm going to talk to you today about how I drew Jimi Hendrix in graphite. And I'm going to give credit to some of the people that helped me learn how to do this. First of all, I found a really good photograph that I liked, that I thought represented Jimi Hendrix well, that I thought maybe was achievable for me. And don't forget, I've not been taught how to do this. I'm picking up tips, tips and tricks on the way. So the first thing I did was a Google search and then I used my uh, photo editor. I've got an Android phone. I've got a Samsung Galaxy and I went into the photo editor to grid that photograph so that I could get his proportions right. And then I drew him, first of all, with graphite pencils. I've chosen Bristol Smooth paper. And I've used sketching pencils, my old sketching pencils from WH Smith. And I've mostly used the B pencils, the soft pencils. So I did the drawing in 2B and then the shading in 4B and 6B. Now, before I, I started putting any graphite down, I tested with two of my carers to say, D -d can you see who that is? And because they were able to tell from the drawing that it was Jimi Hendrix, I was happy to proceed. If I haven't got the drawing right or the proportions right, there was no point in me going any further. And then the next thing I needed to do was to learn how to do blending with the graphite. And I'm going to give credit here to a number of YouTubers. The one I think is best is a YouTuber called BMD Portraits. And I think he's a Filipino, he's certainly an Asian artist, but he does his he does his audio with dual recording in uh, English and I say his native language. And he's very good at blending tones and values. And he also gives really good tips for beginners or for those on limited budgets or for those that have difficulty getting supplies. I would recommend him for portraitures, for beginners and for young artists. So I started first of all with the face and I blended, blended and blended. And I checked on the tones and values. I kept standing back. Have I got it right? Have I got it wrong? The things that I used most for blending were these tools. Uh, my blending stump. This is an old one from WH Smith. I recently found some smaller ones in the UK in Hobbycraft and they're going to be really uh, helpful for getting into tiny spaces. I use my Faber-Castell putty rubber and I also used my faithful Tombow mono eraser. This has got this tiny tip and you can get into very short spaces with that. The, the blending was essential. Blend, blend, blend and tone. Stand back, make sure you've got it right before you proceed. To get the highlight in his eyes, I used the Posca white pen with a very fine nib. It only takes a dot or two and it'll actually help reflect. Usually these photographs are taken with flash photography. So quite often you'll get the flash of the, of the camera right in the center of the pupil and that helps bring the, the the whole picture to light to life i should say not to light um as i went further down once i was happy with his face and his chin and his neck and the values i wanted to do this jacket and this is a magnificent jacket if you see if you see the pictures of jimi hendrix he was incredibly colorful and and um vibrant and I'm doing him in shades of grey. So how on earth was I going to capture the essence of that jacket? And I wanted the richness because I think this was velvet and braid. So I had to create something that was not just a flat colour. I've got some tones and values in. 
I used a crackle effect as if I was doing cobblestones to paint this aspect. I think this is part of his shirt actually. I had an open neck shirt on. And then initially I painted some shading in here. And as I went out to the jacket collar and around here to the jacket edge, it all looked too flat. And in order to give it a 3D effect, I used my putty rubber and I gradually lifted, 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 lifted and went in from the sides for a very gradual, gradual effect. And I think I've achieved what looks now like either a reflection or a little bit of fading on the jacket. It's probably more reflection on this, but it certainly would do. The, that tip would work if you're looking for somebody that's wearing denim. If I were to do status quo, for example, the double denim guys, I would use this technique to look to make the denim look more realistic. The next thing I did was do uh, the zip. And that was just a very fine, very sharp pencil just to get the impression of zips and hooks. And then fine flicks out to do the, the equivalent of the fringing on the jacket. Now, this was a challenge for me doing how do I get braid on here? And the first thing was to make it look equal. So does it look equidistant like the sewer, the costume designer has made? And I did that with using a ruler. And just making sure I've got the right distances and the right gaps between the braiding here and then the right angle at each section where the braiding's looped over. Again, I've used a Posca pen here just to highlight the buttons so there's a little bit of shine on the buttons. And then I've used the equivalent of a herringbone effect with my pencil, a very sharp pencil, to make it look plaited. And I was happy with that. What I was terrified of was getting it wrong by then trying to introduce some hair. And I really needed to learn more about how to draw black African-American hair. And I went on YouTube and I found an artist called uh, Mary Lowe. Now, from her accent, she sounds like she lives... She's certainly in the UK and she sounds like she lives in Birmingham. And she paints portraits... Uh, with braids or uh, what's called relaxed uh, African hair. And before I went anywhere, I watched her YouTube channel and then, let's see if I can pick that up, I tested and tested out and did swatches myself of what worked and what didn't. And I used a variety of tools to see what effects I could get, what was too harsh, what I could handle and what I could manage and what would work best for me. You can see this incredibly deep. If I wanted to do a very rich velvet, I'd certainly use that. That was with the um, that was with the pastels, black pastels. And then I started to dot it and lift it. So I'm using my putty rubber at this stage. What will lift out to give a mottled effect? I tried with charcoal sticks. And I tried to do curly hair techniques with charcoal sticks. And then did I use a dark stick, a medium stick or a soft stick? And I actually opted for uh, from the from the I'm going to not blind you here, but I used the Royal Langnickel set. This is a graphite set I have. Let's see if we can get that on camera. And from this set, I opted for this one, the um, Royal uh, Royal Langenickel Medium Charcoal Stick. And from that, I was able to get this effect of a curly hair. And then it might not pick up very well on this, on this uh, camera, but I actually went in with the stylus tool as well. And with the stylus tool, before I began, I actually preserved some of the white of the paper. Can you see that pointed edge? I actually preserved some of the white of the paper here so that the graphite and the charcoal won't, in, won't go into the graphite and 
it will preserve that whiteness. Now, in order to get what looks like reflection on his hair, his hair is probably very shiny at this point. I've used some of that effect, so I preserved that first. And I went in very, very carefully. And I went in with the charcoal pen, pen uh, charcoal stick, sorry, charcoal stick right around and make sure that I get some cast shadow from his hair on his forehead. So I had to go back and alter the values around his forehead. And I did curly motions, but actually his hair's not curly, it straightened it out. And I found the best thing for me was doing squiggles. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. I used a sharp edge and squiggled it. And then to get the smudging, I used the smudging stick and then kept going over it. And I found as I stood back that the effect I was getting was too hard, too harsh. So I went over it softer again and I used faithful cotton buds. And these cotton buds, the cotton doesn't come off the stick. It's very tightly bound. And I was able just to smudge round to make sure that the spaces were filled in. And then I just smudged outwards ever so gently and took took the charcoal. I didn't put any more charcoal down. I just took what was there very gently out to give this halo effect around his hair. And when I stood back, what I'd done was really too harsh. It didn't match the rest of the picture. And I wasn't happy with it. I sat with it overnight and I had him looking at me and I thought, I've not done that right. How am I going to correct it? And the way that I corrected it was going in again with the putty rubber. And I got it to a, I got it to a fine point and I just went and lifted the heaviness of the charcoal all the way around. I needed a very hard edge here to define his, his uh, face shape and a hard edge here to define the face shape but the rest of it was too harsh so I started to dab and lift it and that's what gave it that feel that there was some depth there true depth rather than just a black flat image and I have to say that for my first drawing in graphite I'm delighted with this I took it along to my art class and my fellow artists were amazed because the the tutor hadn't taught us how to do this. And I've said it's because I spend a lot of time on YouTube following other people and taking hints and tips and tricks from them. And then I spent a great deal of time on this. Now, because I've got ME and I have shake and grip problems, I might have taken longer than most would. But this took took me about... 12 hours to do in all that's not counting the research I needed to do so I hope that some of my ideas will help you in your graphite drawings and making them look realistic and giving them a bit of a wow effect and I hope that you'll come back and learn more with me again I'm learning all the time and I'm more than happy to share what I've learnt with you so for now, this is Maggie saying bye for now. See you soon.